In this video, we've already set up our Sudoku board and we're now ready to start working with an array. To give you a little bit of an understanding of how we can work with the array, I've made a button here and what I'm going to start by doing is showing you how I could put in the text of each and every 81 buttons um, the index number that it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have button 2 click and I'm going to make a loop using the for next loop. So index is going to start at a value of 1 and it's going to increment by 1 all the way to 81. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that my Sudoku array at the index, so 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, etc., its text property is going to equal, um, let's say, the index. So we can see uh, what the item's value is. So when I run the program, you're going to see if I press the button, it's going to put in text box 1, the Sudoku array 1, rather, it's going to put for the text property a 1 and a 2 for the 2, and a 9 for the ninth element, and an 81 for the 81 element. Great. The next thing I want to do is I want to work with uh, having an event so I can write one event that is going to trigger for each and every um, Sudoku um, cell that I click. So for example, if I click on this cell and select this cell, I wanted to do something. I wanted to know that this is cell 41 and I wanted to do something like highlight or change color or change font or whatever it is. In, in the end, it's going to be when I select a cell um, and I put a number, maybe I'm going to put the number 3 in the cell, that the cell should um, scan for any other 3's on this row. Uh, and scan the column for any threes and then scan this cube to see if there's any threes. So how will it know that I clicked on this cell, for example, uh, to, and what is the value that I put in here? So to do that, um, it takes a little bit of work. And so one of the first things I have to do is I'm going to show you a property that you've probably never seen before and it's called the tag property. And if you look here um, at um, uh, text box uh, 32, for example, that I've selected, there's a property here called tag. And what tag is, is tag can be a container for any kind of value or variable. And so I'm going to misuse it as a uh, variable holder. So it's going to store the value in text box 32. It's going to store the value of 32. Well, that would take a lot of work to go to each one and I don't want to go to each one and say uh, text box 32 is 32 and so forth. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. <coughs> what I'm going to do is in that same button, I'm going to put the tag in it. And so instead of putting the text in, um, I'm going to say the tag is equal to the index. Now notice I got rid of the text, so you won't see any text. And if I run the program and I press the button, it's going to look like there's nothing in it. Uh, and that's because the tag is tagged now. So 32 is 32 and 8 is 8, but you don't see it. So just to test that it actually does exist, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write an event for clicking a text box. Okay, now we're ready to try to create one event that is going to handle every click of every button. And what will be nice about this is we can have one event to select the cells and it's going to, I don't have to write 81 different subroutines. I can write this in one subroutine. So here's how I go about doing it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create a sub and I'm going to call it click array. And basically you're going to see it looks exactly like button one click. Um, but I'm going to call it click array. Unfortunately, I can't go Sudoku um, array underscore click. That would be the ideal thing. So I can just select any of my clicking any of my array elements. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this 
click array or I clicked here or whatever. Click array sounds all right. And here's the trick. The trick is what comes after here called the handle. And so what I can do is I can say that this is going to handle clicking text box one and it's going to handle clicking text box two and text box three and text box four and text box five all the way to 81. So if I click any of those buttons, this is a code that's going to be executed. So let's take a deeper look at this. I am going to instantiate a, a temporary text box. So I go dim temp text box as text box. And so it'll take in all the properties of the class of text box. And then what I'm going to do is the, I'm going to use this C type um, to get the, um, from the text box, I'm going to get uh, what was sent. And so that is going to be the, um, uh, so now the temporary text box is going to take over as being whichever text box was clicked. And so what I could do here is I could do something like, um, for example, message box, the temporary uh, text box, it's tag. So I could find out what the tag was um, and let's display it just because I click the temporary text box is going to get the value of or take over. It's going to be cast um, as the text box and get all the sender's information. And then I can say, great, well, what is the tag or what is the font or what is the background color? I get any property I want. In this case, the property I want is I want to get the tag. And if I want to be a little bit more correct, I could even say the value of the, the tag and uh, turn it into a, a number, but uh, I don't have to, it, it'll work um, without doing that. So I'll just message box the tag for now. So when I press play, um, you're going to see, oh, by the way, I didn't show you this. Uh, in form load, I created that loop that you saw a second ago and I put it in form load rather than a button. And what's going to happen is each of the Sudoku arrays tag will have index. So I press play and now if I click any button, so if I click button 32, it's going to say 32 because it was tagged as 32. If I click the very last one, it's going to say 81 because it was tagged as 81. And if I click the first one, it'll be one. Great. So now what I can do is I can now know which text box was selected. So finally, I'm going to make a variable, a global variable called selected cell. And the reason I want to make a global variable called selected cell is I want to know what the tag value was of the selected cell as I clicked it. And so any other procedure will be able to read, oh, the selected cell right now is 32 or it's one or it's 81. So what I'm going to do is instead of message boxing, I know it works. I'm simply going to say selected cell is equal to the value of the, the text box tag. And so now I can have a subroutine, which when I click it, it's going to tell me, um, each of the 81 cells that I click, it'll tell me what the value of the tag was.